Hi, this is Terry Kuti, founder and director of Deep Sea Foundation. And we talk about topics that are related to breast surgery and breast reconstruction. We have a lot of wonderful guests. And today I'm really pleased to introduce Elise Cantu, who is a certified lymphedema therapist. She's also the creator of the Onco PT podcast. And I'm really glad to have you today. I have been a guest on your show. That's how we met. So I'm kind of jazzed to have you on the foundation page today, Elise. This is really exciting to be on this side of the screen and the microphone today. So I'm super pumped to be here. And Terry, thanks so much for inviting me on to, to do this. I'm really excited about it. It is my pleasure. It is my pleasure. I have a very specific topic in your wheelhouse to talk about today, Elise. Yes. We have done some videos on the YouTube channel, uh, the foundation YouTube channel that deal with lymphedema, explain mm -hmm. treatment, but there's something specific to lymphedema or to your, uh, to a physical therapist. That's what I meant to say mm -hmm. that a lot of women talk about. I hear it a lot. So we're going to talk about axillary cording today. I've had questions about it. So I'd like for you to tell us, you know, give us an explanation of what it is, um, what causes it, how we treat it, and let's get rolling. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do so it. cording or otherwise known as axillary web syndrome kind of falls under the umbrella of lymphedema or issues with the lymphatic system um, that are unfortunately very common in the oncology patient population. So we know, and I'm sure your audience is very familiar with, you know, lymphedema can be caused by several different things. Some of the big ones include surgery, you know, maybe that's actually removing lymph nodes or damaging those lymph vessels and radiation. Both of those are, you know, the mainstays of especially breast cancer treatment. And chemotherapy can even play into that decreased lymphatic movement throughout the body. Yeah, so, I, I call it the disruption of the lymphatic yes, system. That's and exactly it, what it is. Yeah, because it can include any of those things that you mentioned, Elise. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, unfortunately, this is something that is very under discussed in the breast cancer patient population. Um, you know, I feel like when my patients come to me, so, you know, I'm the physical therapist, they come and see me because they have problems, some of which include lymphedema and cordine potentially, you know, they've heard about, you know, oh, the nausea and the vomiting and the fatigue and all these other side effects. But I feel like nobody talks about lymphedema and especially cordine. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a backup. What cording or axillary web syndrome is, is it's a backup of that lymphatic fluid into the vessels. And whether that's the veins or the lymphatic vessels, that's something outside the scope of this talk here, but know that it could potentially be both. We're still doing a lot of research on this because yeah. we don't fully understand it. So this is kind of one of those, we're doing the best we can with what we've got scenarios. So we've got a backup of this lymphatic stuff into these vessels and it can be painful. It can cause problems with people being able to reach, you know, have full range of motion. And it can happen not just in the axilla or in the armpit. That's where a lot of times it can happen. But I have patients who have cording like even into their breast tissue here, kind of down their side, you know, after we're talking breast cancer surgery here. I actually just saw someone commenting um, on a Facebook group that I'm a part of that they were even having some cording into their back. So why, why can it happen in all of these places potentially? Anywhere that there's any kind of lymphatic vessels, you know, flowing stuff through, there can be a backup there. It tends to be more in the armpit and in my experience, more in kind of this breast tissue area, but it could potentially happen in other places. So 
how axillary web syndrome is treated, how cording is treated is very similar to how we treat lymphedema. So for those of you who are familiar, we treat lymphedema with a two-step process. We decongest or we get rid of the swelling as much as we can. We decrease it down. That's phase one. And then phase two, we try to keep it as low as possible so that the patient can ultimately manage it on their own. And so in the process of doing that, we're working with manual lymph drainage or MLD as it's commonly abbreviated, where the therapist, you know, maybe that's physical therapist, occupational therapist, speech therapist, you know, sometimes massage therapists are doing this as well. Hands-on are working to actually move that fluid up and out of the system. We're working with compression. Maybe it's bandaging at first and then compression garments later. Lots of education, lots of um, decongestive exercises to get that fluid moving as much as possible. And then where I think it gets a little more specialized for the cording part. So this is what I've talked about is more the lymphedema treatment kind of spectrum. Cording is where we really get into, I really do a lot of like hands-on techniques. I'm not breaking or trying to pop the cording. Um, Terry, I don't know if we've talked about this or if you've ever experienced this, but several years ago, that was the way to treat cording. You know, you get in there and you pop it and then it would go away. Well, that doesn't feel very good. And it didn't always make them go away and it could potentially cause more problems. So we've definitely gone away from that as a profession. So now we're doing more hands-on. Sometimes I'm really doing some soft tissue mobilization, trying to get in and get those tissues to move better. You know, maybe I'm doing some sustained holds on that area to try and release it. Lots of range of motion, just trying to get that area to move because when we can get that area to move, we can get that fluid to move better. And so that's why it's very intertwined with some of the common lymphedema treatment plans that a lot of our patients will experience. You know what I'm hearing from you? And first mm -hmm. of all, Yes, I have experienced it. All of these, all of these movements that you were doing, uh, that I had that done after my double mastectomy, but also after my reconstructive surgery, I had deep flap. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm hearing is movement, two M words, movement and maintenance. Yes. I have to tell you as a little small analogy, my maternal grandmother who lived to be a hundred years old, she, uh, she used to always, you know, say your body is a machine. It's better to wear out than rust out. So, so that, that, yeah, that goes into the whole movement. I think even with lymphedema, you know, the maintenance is important learning from a certified lymphedema therapist, but keep the movement going because it's when it, sit still, it can tighten up, the fluid can back up. And, and as you said, Elise, it can happen in a lot of different places. I think of our lymphatic system, and I know uh, I interviewed a gentleman named Dr. Garza, and he talked about the function of the lymphatic system and how it drains, you know, everything away. Everything, yes. So there, so it's like everywhere in our body. So you have to think that it could potentially happen in various spots. You know, you talk about women with swelling and everything, the axillary disruption with breast surgery. So that was a really good explanation. Now, here's something I want to ask you specifically for the viewers. Um, mm -hmm. Access. How, how do women and men who might be experiencing anything like this mm -hmm. Tell us about access and finding someone who really can help directly with a breast cancer patient who's dealing with this. Absolutely. There are physical therapists out there. Yes. And so there's a lot of providers out there. Not everybody does lymphedema therapy. So I want to just take a quick moment here to kind of discuss um, right now in the news, even my husband, who's also a physical therapist, not in oncology, he treats athletes and whatnot, but he saw an article that someone posted in our area that was talking about, um, lymphatic massage and lymphatic massage and lymphedema treatment are very different things. So 
I hate to bring them up, but the Kardashians do lymphatic massage as part of their cosmetic routine. That's not what we're talking about, okay? We're talking about something very different. This is by certified lymphedema therapist. And I would highly encourage patients who either have lymphedema, have cording, or think they have these things, find a certified lymphedema therapist because that provider has gone through extensive education to really know what they're talking about and what they're doing. Unfortunately, in the United States, lymphedema is largely caused by cancer treatments. And there are a lot of patients out there who have this. And there is actually, I think I saw a statistic for every one therapist, like CLT lymphedema therapist out there, there's at least a hundred to a thousand patients who have lymphedema. It's bonkers. And so we need to make sure that we're connecting patients with a provider who can really help them. So my favorite place to look there are different schools that teach lymphedema therapy, that teach the CLT, Certified Lymphedema Therapist. So I'm going to name off four. Um, you know, maybe we can put this in the, the description later, but I love to go to any of those four school websites to start looking. And then I have another resource I'll tell you about. So Norton, ACOLS, which the acronym is currently escaping my brain. Um, Close and Botter are the four big ones that I know here in the United States, and they have a directory of therapists who have gone through their program, nice. um, which is really nifty. And then, so there's a kind of next level certification you can get as a CLT, which is the LANA. So you sit for a test. It's a big test. I have personally, I've taken it and passed it. So I am a CLT LANA. So if you see that, that's what that means. Yeah. So the LANA website, L-A-N-A, -A, uh, Lymphology Association of North America, they also have a search tool that you can plug in your zip code and you can find a therapist there, whether that's physical therapist, occupational therapist, I think there's a couple speech therapists on there and even massage therapists who are trained and there's other professionals. I'm not trying to exclude them. I'm just kind of going through the, the main ones here um, who have gone through this training, who know what they're doing and can help you with this problem because this, this doesn't feel good and it's not going away on its own. And so we need to get in there. We need to take care of it now before it gets worse because it will get worse. Unfortunately, if you don't take care of it. You know what, this is, this is exactly what I was looking for because access sometimes is just an issue. So those are great yes. resources. Um, I'm going to reach out to you after we wrap up today and I'm going to put those at the end of this uh, video so that patients will have access to this. Thank you so much for doing this today. I know, you know, somebody asked me, you know, sometimes patients will have a, a I, I don't even want to call it a light uh, condition of lymphedema, but there are variations. Um, there are, right. And so can, can those wax and wane? So in other words, she told me, she said, you know, during the pandemic, which we're filming now during the pandemic, she said, I've been continuing to exercise, but I've been wearing my sleeve and it hasn't really been bothering me. Can that happen? Yes, unfortunately. So Terry, you hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, there's kind, there's kind of a spectrum. So there's different stages of lymphedema. Um, I think when we think of lymphedema, most of the time we think of that stage three, which is a huge, you know, maybe arms or limbs, lots of swelling. A lot of people don't end up there. A lot of people are in stage one, stage two, but even more people are in stage zero which is where there is already a decrease in that lymphatic system's ability to process. We can't see it yet, but there's a problem underneath the surface. And in stage one and stage two is where we start to see, oh, there's some swelling, you know, or maybe some skin changes, whatever that looks like. Terry, I can't tell you how many patients have come to me and said, you know, at the beginning, you know, before the pandemic, I was doing okay. And then I started having a little swelling, but that would go away. That's what happens in stage one. Swelling comes and it goes by itself. Maybe there's no explanation. But most patients don't come to me until they're in stage two, which is when they have swelling or symptoms all the time. 
it's so much easier to treat patients in stage one than in stage two. So if you're having those, you know, like, oh, I'm having a little swelling and then it seems to go away and, you know, whatever, that it's still potentially happening. It's still lymphedema that is starting to flare its head. We got to get it under control now before it progresses because lymphedema is chronic, meaning that it is not going away. It's something you're going to live with for the rest of your life. And it is progressive, meaning that it will get worse unless you treat it appropriately. And now, don't wait. Please, you know, find your local lymphedema therapist who can help you with this. Because nothing is worse, I think, than a patient coming in who's got out of control, horrible swelling, and it hurts, and it's heavy, and it doesn't feel good, and it's affecting their ability to lift their grandkids or their kids and, you know, do hobbies and work and, you know, hang out with their family members as much as we can during this time, right? Nothing's worse than that when we could have had it taken care of so much earlier, so much sooner. Oh, great information today. Thanks for being on the program. We may have to catch up again soon. Thank you, Terry. This is so much fun. Yeah, it was good to see you. Thanks for joining us today. And if you have any questions or comments about this video, please let us know or other topics to cover after watching this. Um, let us know in the comment section. Elise, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Terry. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Take care. Thank you.